Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks, and as popularly requested on Instagram, I am here today to show you a tutorial on building sliding doors. Now I've actually taken a little bit of customization, and I've torn apart the back section so I can show you piece by piece what works with the sliding doors. But first, let me show you some of the main parts that will work with this and where I got the inspiration for this sliding door function. About two years ago, I received a gift of three books called the Lego Technic Idea Book. It's a, it's a kind of like volume one, two, and three. Um, they were all made with the publisher No Starch Press and the author, I apologize if I mispronounce this, Yoshihito Isogawa. Um, he's very good with different Technic models and different contraptions. And basically, all three of these books have different ways of building simple technic contraptions that you can apply into your own models. This also works with regular Lego, uh, you just have to find the way that it works on your own. But there are, it's all pictures in here, there are no uh, actual words inside except for the about the author in the back. And if you want to find this book for yourself, I've actually seen, just researched it online, this is available from Walmart and Barnes & Noble for a pretty good low price. Actually lower than the price that was tagged on the back of this book because it's still on there. So, we're going to take a quick look inside of the book. There is a page back here that I have already bookmarked and shows you about opening doors. There's a couple different mechanisms in the book about opening doors and this is the one that I used for the sliding doors. It may be a little hard to see so I'll try to bring it a little bit closer to the camera. So you can see it shows you from different angles how the door is made. It has a lot of Technic parts to it, but I tried to translate it somewhat into regular Lego parts. And uh, the same mechanism shown here is in what I have for my, um, for my sliding door. It basically has the operations of two... We'll, we'll start at the motor. The motor turns an axle. The axle has two gears on it. The two gears are attached next to two other gears that turn different axles. Those different axles will turn two gears on their own in different directions because of the way they're positioned next to these gears on the first axle. It may be a little bit complicated to follow along with so I'll try to go easy with it when we get to the actual tutorial. Those gears on the ends, the final gears, will turn the parts of the door. You can see right there and it slides in both the opposite direction. It takes a little bit of work to understand, but I think the pictures speak well for themselves. So now we'll actually go to the model and see how it's made. Now we'll take a look at the most important parts of making the sliding door. Although you could change around the style of the doors or how large they are, these are some of the pieces that are most important for making it no matter what size. Um, it gives you pretty much the exact number of the parts you need, and as far as making it in a Lego system, the regular, you know, bricks and things, um, these are what you're going to use. They are a little bit different from the Technic Ideas book, since the Technic Ideas book is based around Technic parts. So let's take a look at what we need. This is probably the most important type of part. I do not know the, the exact name of it, so if anybody knows, it would be appreciated if they put it in the comments below. This is a 1x4, I think it's a modified plate or tile, I'm not really sure which, but it has these tooth grooves on the top of it. Now these are designed to fit along with all different kinds of gears from LEGO. And some of the gears that we have over here are going to interact with it, the large gears in fact. Um, they're going to interact with it directly on top, and these will go on top of your doors so that you can slide them back and forth. Now, as far as finding them in Lego sets, I do know a set that is relatively cheap in terms of getting two of them, and you get exactly two in that set. It is set number 75074, Snowspeeder. This is the Microfighters version from Lego Star Wars, released in 2015. On the model itself, after assembling it, you can see... This is put onto the back, so you can easily take these off and use them for your mock of the sliding door. Oops, another part broke and didn't mean to. Those are the most important parts because 
they are going to make the sliding happen with all the gears. You could make it much simpler than that, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. Now, the other parts you're going to need, these are small Technic pieces. Again, I don't know the name of them, but they have a number one on them. I think that specifies what type of piece it is in that category. And these are used so that you can have pins attached on one side or even have axles slide through here, but also have axles put into place on this end. You need two of those. I would actually recommend that you use type 2 and then use some reinforcement, but I'll talk about that in a later video when I update my sliding doors. We don't have to worry about that for now. These are some large Technic gears that you'll need. They're not the largest out of any Technic gears made, actually. They're probably the second smallest, maybe even... Uh, I'd, I'd argue to say maybe even the third or fourth smallest that they've made. These are actually ones from Bionicle, but they are used in Technic sets. And you could use something equivalent to these in terms of size. They're roughly a 2x2 two two, uh, area. And they could still work if they're not exactly the same shape, just as long as they're roughly, you know, larger than these pieces. These are all Technic gears, again, from Bionicle. Uh, this one could actually be technically that piece. You don't have to use different sizes for that. There should be six of them. And these are going to be ones that you'll use inner, inside and out of each other and facing different directions. So you can get the gears to turn and then get the the axles to fit along these to turn in different directions. Now over here we have some Technic bricks. These are going to make things a lot simpler for um, for attaching it to the rest of your Lego assembly. They don't have to be that specific size. I just chose that size. You probably at the least need a 1x4 which will have three holes in it. And then last but not least we have these sliding pieces. These are modified plates with a groove on the end to slide inside of these 1x4 pieces. They are also modified to have a cutout section. So the intent of these is that they will fit inside of there uh, roughly one, one plate higher than the actual brick and they will slide horizontally. When we get the full assembly done, this actually works really well if you're making a Lego style uh, door. If you're making it out of Technic, you probably won't need it though. They make it great for fixed horizontal movement. Now we'll get to the building. So the first thing I'm going to start with are the doors themselves. These are going to be important to know how big of a space you're going to use for the whole mechanism. And you could either start with the mechanism and then do the doors, but I, I think the doors will actually be easier to use first. Now, I've already made a small assembly here. These are two 1x4 bricks stacked on top of each other followed by a 1x4 plate and a 1x2 plate. Now in that area in between them, you should be able to fit our modified plates with the slide uh, attached to them. That's going to be important for working with the sliding bricks that we mentioned earlier. They'll be at the right height and it won't be too low or too high for the door. It'll work just right. On top of that, we'll use for my version of the doors We'll have a 1x4 plate and then a 1x4x3 panel. That way you actually have a, a, a vision of what's inside of the building that you're about to enter. Now on top of those, we're going to use the 1x4 modified pieces that have the teeth on top. Now that we have the doors done, I've already constructed a little bit of an entryway here. Um, if you're seeing this after my mock update, I've deconstructed part of the entryway, so you get a better idea of where the doors are going to go and how they're going to slide. Now we want our doors theoretically to meet up in the middle at the same even point, so you'll have this amount of space. And I've already made it so that you could have at least one minifigure wide fit through the door when all of this is assembled. So we're going to need some space on both sides so that we can slide the door out of the way and, and pretty much obscure it with wall around it. So that way the minifigure can walk all the way through without interference of the door. For this to work, I've already have, you know, these two one by four doors. So we're going to need a plane that's about one by 12 wide. 
you can see I've already constructed that inside of the wall, actually inside of the floor of this building. It's actually surrounded by plates so that it makes it a smooth entrance and doesn't have any wobbling, you know, stepping over a plate and under a plate or anything like that. So now we're going to start working on actually building up partial uh, bits of the wall. Now, as I already showed you, the, the doors are a good model for where everything's going to fit. And I do find that this is a good spot for holding the, uh, the modified plates. Instead of having them on the bottom and such, it actually works out well if it's in mo mostly the middle section so that it'll make the sliding function work best. This will simply be built up out of a couple different bricks. Just give me a moment to assemble those. <clears throat> now up to this point, I've made only two bricks high, but we're going to have to remove the doors so that we can fit in our sliding modified bricks. These are going to fit right along the edges, right where the doors will finally uh, rest. Now you can fit the doors back in there, and they should be able to slide in and they'll be perfectly fixed in there, even by one of these plates. I personally recommend two so that we don't have any issues, but I did not have two available for this video. So now we can build up the surrounding areas of the wall, and um, we'll see you there. So now we are seven bricks high, and it's actually obscuring part of the teeth that we had before on top of the doors. That's going to be required so that we can fit in the gears and fix them into place with the bricks surrounding it. Now I did have the, the whole mechanism, the whole door composition from here to here is an area of about three studs length, 14 studs width. And as far as height, I think it's going to wind up being close to nine, maybe ten bricks high. I think now it's going to be about eight bricks high. So, but in order to cover that over that, you'll probably need another uh, brick layer or a few plates, but we're not going to worry about that for now. So first we're going to do, we're going to line up these two holes, which would be the two holes inward on top. You see right there, we're going to put our gears, just sit them on there. It doesn't matter which way they go for right now. Um, we'll figure that out a little bit more as we go on. I'm going to take our two Technic pieces, again you could use different arrangement depending on what you have, and just put them right on top of this layer. Now we somewhat obscure the gears, but the gears, these large gears, are on top of the doors. Remember the doors had the teeth on top of them, so this will directly interact with the door. Then we'll take two assemblies, these are both made from our small gears and two axles. These axles are both five studs long, and we're going to plug these in to the door, like so. They'll figure their way out as far as fixing them on top of the doors. Now, from the front, you shouldn't have it seen, and we could go a little bit more into obscuring the front, because it does have a lot of holes, and see a little bit of the axles on the outside. We're not going to worry about this part for right now. Next up, we're going to have a small assembly. I'll do it separately, and then we'll directly attach it in there. We actually have two assemblies to do. Let's get to them. So here we have our first small assembly. This is the one that I've mentioned before. It will connect the gears to each other, so it makes the gears turn in opposite directions, just the way that they're oriented um, outside of this mechanism. So, the pieces to use for this are as follows. These two axles are the same five stud wide axles we had before, they're just in a different color. These pieces on top are the ones I mentioned that are a type 1, they could also be type 2, it's recommended, but type 1 is still works. This axle across the middle is a 7 wide, 7 stud wide that is, axle piece. And on there we have our small gear, our other small gear in this place. I have the much smaller gear with a small bushing, but pretty much this is an equivalent of that. And then on the other end, we have another small gear. We'll put this aside, and then we'll work on the knob. The knob is something I've created with working with the door. 
And technically, you could already leave this assembly and put it on there and you'll get it to work. But I decided to put on a knob so that I can actually interact with it after the building is completed. You can use an axle like this. It doesn't have to have the stopper on it, but I like to use the stopper. It's roughly five studs wide, or long I mean. We'll use a small gear on one end. For me it's the stopper end. And then we'll leave it like that. We're going to assemble the rest of it as we get it onto the building. So now we'll take our two assemblies and put them on. We'll start with the small one. This is going to go in first. And it will go in the hole in the middle of the doorway. That's why I would personally recommend that you work with the larger Technic pieces on both sides of the door. So that it will easily fill in the space you need for working on three different holes on three different sides. Next up we'll take this assembly and I'm going to put it in like so. This is the fifth and fourth hole to put in, so again, appropriately match that with your Technic bricks. And you'll notice this one actually stretches a little bit outward to the front. You can see it right there. We have a few pins, a few axles, excuse me, that are sitting out in the front. Now, for what I've done with this mock so far, I've just simply put some bushings on the ends of these to hold them in place. I strongly recommend do not use axles for this small assembly we just attached in a four stud width. It's not going to hold in place, so you need the reinforcement from both sides to hold this in. Otherwise, it will not work. For the next part, for my knob, I've simply taken a small bushing piece, this is half the size of a regular bushing piece, and I decided to make something decorative. I use one of these types of pieces and I just put a small uh, radar dish on it, inverted dish, to make the knob. So now we could pretty much call this done, but just to secure things a little bit better, I have two more bushing pieces to add on the back. This will again help with more reinforcement so that we don't have it falling apart as we use it. I've tested it many times, I know what I'm doing. These simply fit right on the back and it'll keep these gears in place. They won't spread outward, and they'll lock in with the gears here. So now we can take a look at our finished assembly. Here's a look at it from the top. Remember how we explained it before? This knob is going to go into here and turn these two gears. This gear is on an axle with two more gears, which in both in opposite directions of each other will turn. On the axles of those gears, it will turn these two. On those two gears, it will turn the doors, which have the, the, the gear pieces on top of them. The, gear, the doors are connected to, each, to the wall by slides. So, when we get the full thing done, let me just move my figure out of the way. You simply turn this. Yep. Simply turn this. All right, something's going wrong. Uh, I know what it is. Here's something uh, a little bit of as a troubleshoot. I know that's not supposed to happen right away, but if these pieces, these Technic pieces, are not completely locked in and they're not flush, they will be a little hard to move the mechanism. So hopefully now it works. Now I can turn this. And you'll start to see the doors closing. I'll get them open. Give it a little bit of loose, loosening up, and it works. There we go. Now remember, everything's fixed into place, so it might be a little bit slow on catching on the gears and making everything move. Maybe I'll just have to loosen up a few pieces to get this to work a little better, but it still does the job. So thank you for watching this video, hope you guys enjoyed it, 
Please let me know how well I explained the tutorial, as I haven't done this many times, and with something more technical in terms of working with LEGO, I'd like to be sure that I explained this properly and gave enough instructions for building it. Um, I hope this works out for those who want to use the idea in their own mocks, and um, let me know if there are other things that need to be changed to make it better, or maybe to get rid of these obscurities, perhaps... You probably just use a few other pieces to block it off, but I'll see what I can do in my own mock building and see if I change this around on my own. I'm not going to throw it in at the end of this video. I'd rather just put it as an annotation so that you can see it at a later time of how it's been updated. So thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you next time with more LEGO videos.